Great. Thanks so much, and I want to thank the organizers for inviting me uh, to speak again this year. Um, I decided to title my talk, uh, Personalized Medicine, Humanity's Ultimate Big Data Challenge. And I did that not to fit as many buzz terms into one title as I possibly could, but to really frame the issue, and, and I think you've heard this throughout the, the last uh, two days, that this is fundamentally becoming a data challenge. Um, I also liked uh, Dr. Yu's presentation earlier today, and I like the fact that this uh, section of the agenda is called Next Generation Healthcare IT, because the healthcare IT that we're implementing and incentivizing today is a wholly necessary but wholly insufficient step to really making personalized medicine a reality, and we truly are going to need next generation platforms and technologies uh, to make personalized medicine a reality. So with that, I'll try and uh, give you a little bit of background on how Oracle sees this challenge uh, and where things are going. So like I mentioned, we really do view this as a big data challenge. Uh, big data is a big term right now. Data is being generated all over the place at an unprecedented rate in many other industries. I would argue that this is humanity's ultimate big data challenge, though, because while it's great to target sales and retail and financial services uh, using big data algorithms, uh, getting this right for our healthcare system to keep innovation alive while addressing the cost quality challenges, I would argue, is fundamentally our biggest challenge and, and one that I'm proud that Oracle is, is starting to tackle. We've talked a lot about the underlying and exciting new molecular technologies uh, throughout the course of this conference that's giving us insight into human biology. But I would argue that if we took a step back and thought about what a rational healthcare system would look like, you would want to ask questions like this. And we just heard a little bit about some of these concepts in the reimbursement section. You'd want to know what works, why it works, who it works for, et cetera. And like any good industry, we've got a lot of buzz terms for these and, and more complicated words so we can impress our, our relatives at the dinner table. But fundamentally, from an enterprise software company's perspective, this is about using data. And if you start thinking about the data that's needed to answer these kinds of questions, in many cases, it's the same data, just used in a different context. So when we look at that challenge as an enterprise software company, we, we look at what platforms are going to be required in the future uh, to start to help answer these questions and who's going to use it and why. So I'll get, in that, get into that in a little bit. But in this industry, as we've just heard, it's not just simply a technology-driven thing that'll make this transformation occur. So are we truly ready for an information-based transformation of healthcare? Well, I would argue that there's a number of factors, and I'm just going to touch on these briefly because they're concepts we've heard throughout the last two days, that there actually is a perfect storm of elements that are going to help enable this. So first is information technology. Between cloud computing, social networking, new big data analytics techniques, open source algorithms, we're able to do computing at a scale that even two or three years ago wasn't possible uh, to deal with in an economic fashion uh, in this industry. And it's happening faster than, than, uh, than many people even realize. So we're seeing this, this revolution in information technologies occurring. I, you guys know this is better than we do. We're also seeing that revolution in, in biotechnology. I think some folks uh, used slides that showed how uh, the cost per megabase, and I think the speaker after me will probably refer to this, for doing sequencing is far outstripping Moore's Law. So we're seeing this revolution in biotechnology and platform technologies that where cost is not going to be an inhibitor anymore to, to uh, generating this data. But those two things alone wouldn't be enough, I would argue, for really having this information-based transformation. There's also tremendous business model pressures uh, on all players in the healthcare and life sciences ecosystem, uh, payers, providers, PBMs, health plans, life sciences industry, et cetera, that are going to force people to do things in a different way. I would even argue many of these companies are facing existential threats to their underlying business models uh, and are going to increase, and those pressures are going to continue. And then finally, we just finished the section on regulatory and, and reimbursement. Um, and I want to thank the organizers for uh, putting me after them. Um, but that's a challenging landscape, and I think one where data is going to play a fundamental role in keeping innovation alive while dealing with the regulatory and reimbursement challenges. So let's just look at this through the lens of one industry. And that's the global life sciences industry, which I know many of you in this room are a part of. Uh, this is a quote from the CEO of Roche uh, from uh, late December. Uh, but he argued that there's truly a perfect storm facing the life sciences industry, both from a regulatory perspective, from a, a reimbursement perspective, as well as from a shareholder perspective, looking at R&D productivity. And many of you who are in this industry know there's a lot of disruption and change going on uh, throughout the, the world's global biopharmaceutical companies. But one of the interesting conclusions that he reached in framing this, and people have been framing the challenge that the global life sciences industry is, is and is continuing to face for a long time, is that 
fundamentally, there's a new data paradigm and new uh, types of data exchange that need to start to occur across the different players. And he made a very compelling case that not only do we need to be doing clinical trials, but we need to start linking that with real world data. And as I'll talk about in a little bit, we're starting to see the leading indicators that this is actually starting to happen. But it's not just heads of industries that are recognizing this. I don't know if any of you have seen uh, the announcement that was also made at the same conference in the UK, where David Cameron uh, announced that he's going to work on a plan in the UK where all the NHS data is going to be made available in a controlled ethical fashion to start to accelerate uh, new R&D paradigms. So heads of state are even recognizing this challenge and, and the role that it may play in keeping innovation alive going forward. So what does this learning healthcare system look like? Uh, Dr. Yu earlier today framed his message around this notion of a rapid learning healthcare system. And I really like that mental framework for thinking about uh, the opportunity that we have in front of us with these next-gen healthcare IT platforms. So I mentioned at the, at the outset of my presentation that the EMRs we're adopting and other clinical systems that we're incenting are a necessary but wholly insufficient step. It's really the equivalent of get going digital for the first time. We're starting to get some insights and can start to use that data. But if we stop there, we'll have just brought some efficiencies to, to healthcare. If we really want to transform it and answer those hard questions I framed at the outset of my talk, we're going to have to go beyond that. And so this diagram, uh, 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 I think, at a very conceptual level, captures where we need to go. So we not only need the longitudinal clinical transactional data captured in these systems, whether that be a research system, uh, an EMR, or other financial claim systems. But we need to be able to aggregate that and be able to pr uh, provide analytics on top of it to understand what's working for whom, why, and what context, and what cost. We then need to deploy new systems, both to the patient as well as physicians, to enable more collaborative care and push uh, better decision making uh, to where it matters most. Now, the good news is if we do this right, we can also use these platforms as knowledge generation platforms for supporting things like basic and translational research, uh, uh, supporting new paradigms of faster clinical trials, and we heard Dr. Dalton talk about that very eloquently yesterday, comparative effectiveness, et cetera. So it's not just uh, us that think this. Um, PwC has a great paper that they released uh, in the last year focused on the secondary use of healthcare data. And the reality is, is uh, this paradigm, regardless of which piece of the healthcare and life sciences ecosystem you're in, it impacts you. So what, what kinds of platforms are we going to need? Well, we heard a little bit in Dr. Yu's talk about the need for new health information exchange, interoperability. Uh, and exchange of data, as well as new analytics technologies, as well as new computing paradigms, cloud computing, et cetera, uh, to begin to deal with the massive data volumes. So if we think about this in the context of those new platforms, if we do it right, like I mentioned earlier, it's largely the same data used in a different context. So some of the same data you need to support translational research, you can use to support clinical quality initiatives or new care management paradigms uh, and collaborations between the payers and providers. And then finally, we're already starting to see new research collaborations emerge, leveraging data generated in a real world, quote unquote, setting uh, with pharma uh, R&D initiatives. So getting to one level of granularity, what are those kinds of questions that you can answer at those hard, those hard questions? We would argue that what you really need to take is an integrated view approach. While the transactional systems, while the EMR are great, answering these hard questions, and if you think about the underlying data that you need to answer these kinds of questions, which are going to be the questions that lead to real change in healthcare, the data comes from multiple systems. So from an IT perspective, the challenge is taking data that was captured in one context for one use and making sure that it's now useful in a secondary use. It's a big IT challenge uh, on a number of fronts, but one that we think is, is, is manageable. So this is one of my favorite quotes from William Gibson. The future is already here. It's not evenly distributed yet. And uh, I want to give you some insight into some projects that we're involved with and some, some work that we're doing that hopefully will give you some uh, optimism that this actually could become a reality in the not too distant future. So uh, I personally and we at Oracle have been fortunate uh, over the last uh, two years to be working with a number of strategic development partners uh, uh, who are listed here on a new platform called the Translational Research Center, which really focuses on these data challenges of cleaning and normalizing and aggregating data from all these disparate systems. And then most recently, yesterday, we just announced our omics data bank extension, which then pulls data from a variety of molecular profiling platforms. Um, great leaders in the space, some of which you've heard from today, including Dr. Brian, or in the last two days, including Dr. Brian Juker at OHSU and Bill Dalton yesterday from Moffitt. 
So let's drill down a little bit more into the kinds of use cases that we're able to enable leveraging these next generation platforms. So Bill gave you some great uh, insight into what Moffitt's doing. Um, just to recap, in case some of you weren't in that room, uh, almost 10 years ago, they, they started a new protocol called Total Cancer Care to collect data and get consent from patients uh, to collect their clinical as well as tissue samples over time to give you that longitudinal view of the patient and then recontact them, getting information about what happens once they leave Moffitt, as well as 17 uh, health systems that they collaborate. The kinds of use cases that we're enabling for them are these kinds of questions that are on, on the uh, slide right now. These are hard questions to answer without the right kind of interoperable analytics platforms uh, to, to drive these analyses. Typically, in the past, it would take a, what I call a bioinformagician days or weeks or months uh, to go answer a question like this, and it was a black box. The bioinformagician knew, bioinformatician knew what they were doing, but the, the clinician may not fully believe what they get back because they didn't understand the process. With the right platforms in place, you can answer these kinds of questions quickly and reliably and with the right data governance in a way that uh, the average clinician researcher will actually believe them and take action on it. And that enables new paradigm shifts in the way we do things. As many of you are aware, uh, one of the biggest bottlenecks from a clinical trials perspective in recruiting um, or in getting uh, new therapies to market is recruiting for these targeted clinical trials because the inclusion-exclusion criteria, criteria are much more granular. As Bill talked about yesterday, having this uh, HRI platform, the Health and Research Informatics platform in place, enables a fundamental paradigm shift where we move from trial searching for patients to one where the database enables you to design trials for the patients that you have. And it's a fundamentally new way of approaching it, and one that I think is a, a leading light of where uh, the rest of the industry needs to go. Just to highlight two other examples of, of the leading indicators where things can go, this is not uh, just reserved for the domain of uh, academic medical centers and, and ivory tower medicine. Uh, the community health systems are also taking initiative in this space. So Innova Health System uh, is a health system in, in Northern Virginia, for those of you not familiar with it, six hospitals, uh, great clinical quality of care, but historically not uh, a research juggernaut by any stretch. Dr. John Niederhuber, uh, former National Cancer Institute, Direc Institute Director, uh, went there two years ago, and we've been working with him on a new project as part of his new institute called the uh, Innova Translational Medicine Institute on a project where they're consenting uh, mother, fathers, and babies, triplets, and then doing whole genome sequencing on them to begin to drive insight from birth on into underlying causes of disease, premature birth, et cetera. Very exciting project, but a huge information management challenge for a community health system to take on. The EMR is not up to the task of dealing with these kinds of new data management challenges at all. And then finally, I mentioned uh, new collaborative R&D paradigms. Uh, this is an initiative that we're involved in in New York State called the Partnership to Accelerate Clinical Electronic Research. There's about 10 or 12 health systems in New York State, four or five pharma, uh, Quintiles as a CRO, and, and us at Oracle. And it's really to begin to leverage the wealth of data and the investments that these health systems have made as well as the investments that the state has made in their health information exchanges to begin to use that data for insights into uh, both discovery uh, among those pharma, but importantly, uh, protocol design and then ultimately recruitment um, for clinical trials in the state of New York. The politicians love it because it brings knowledge jobs to the state. The pharma companies love it because it addresses a need um, that uh, they otherwise would have trouble uh, dealing with. And the providers love it because it presents an opportunity to begin to get some return on investment for their investment in their healthcare IT technologies. So I'll end with this quote. And I think last year when I spoke, I began with this quote. And it's one of my favorites because I think uh, all of what we're talking about here uh, really combined with the health information technology platforms I just talked about, give us the promise to bring this century old quote uh, to a reality, which I think uh, in, with this audience, I think we'd all love to see. So with that, with that I'll uh, say thank you, and uh, you can contact uh, us if you have any additional questions. I know there's not time for Q&A here. Thanks so much.